name is Brother Khalif Abdul Kwawi Mujahi. My homies and everybody call me by my nickname Fly. Washingtonian, native Washington, D.C. Just uh, touched down two years ago after doing 50 years in prison. Uh, still, man, trying to find my way out here, man. You know, day at a time. You know? Uh, you got a lot of people that tapped there from the UK. You said you wanted to say something to them as well. Yeah, all the Muslims from UK, all over England, everybody that be watching this man send their salam. I want to return my salam to them brothers and sisters and all the Muslims all over the world during these trying times. The them Israelites killing all them innocent Muslims over in Palestine and Gaza Strip. Uh, our heart goes out for the Muslims, man, and uh. Inshallah, man, something gonna happen, man. They gotta stop killing the Muslims like that every day. I mean, it's ridiculous, man, what they getting away with killing all the Muslims over in Palestine. Uh, you said you, uh, no, before I ask you that question, let me ask you another question. So, uh, you mentioned that you've been home for two years, and uh, some people say you become an uh, internet sensation. Everybody want to see you. How how do you feel about that? How, you know, you've been on YouTube a little bit, man, and... Uh, you, uh, some people tell me they seen you here, they seen you there. How has that been for you? Everywhere I go, I see people, man, in stores, restaurants, Walmart, gas stations. Man, you the dude fly. Uh, we stopped there at the red light, some young some fly. What's up, champ? Keep, keep it going, man. We seen some young dudes I never even seen in my life, but they recognize me. And, uh, man, I'm a true Washingtonian, man. I represent D.C. Uh, uh. You know, from the time I was was uh, on the street, man. You know, when I come off the porch, I, you know, I'm a true Washingtonian, man. You know, I represent on the street. I represent in prison. I'm a represent now. You know what I mean? I love this city, man. Uh, when I was talking to you in private, you mentioned that you heard some people had a few things to say that you didn't like about uh, stuff that you was doing on the internet. You want to take a second to address that? Yeah, man, listen. A, a good friend of mine, I've been knowing since the seventies. You know, I come in seventy three, and uh, we was up the old DC jail, and uh, he did a long stretch in Marion. Good old timing, man, Mo brother. And uh, we connected, and he took me to lunch. And while we was out to lunch, he said, "Man, a lot of dudes talking bad about you. They mad at you." I said, mad at me? He said, man, uh, they say you doing interviews with white dudes and police and, and crackers and, and talking bad about the homies. I said, first of all, I ain't said nothing bad about the homies except the dude, the little cow dude that started the war in Murray. You know, a dude put a cow and move and started an unnecessary war in, uh, and I talked about another homie who used to be my man in law. And one out of young homie Zulu knocked him out. And ever since he's been exposed, he's been running around slandering my name and Silk name and other good dudes. He, you know, he's a traitor. But he's been faking all the time. But as far as me talking bad about, I've been giving homies their props in every interview I did. The old timers, my generation, the generation after me. So if anybody feel like First of all, that's a straight up lie about me doing interviews with police and the white dude Chad Marx is an ex-convict. And he done interviews with Mexican Mouse and the ABs and everybody kept saying, why you won't interview Fly? And he reached out to me. You know, and he's an ex-convict, he did time, he's an ex jailhouse lawyer. And the dude reached out to me, he said, man, it's only fair I interview you because I interviewed everybody else. Everybody want to know why I interview you like I'm discriminating. And he said, I finally got fly for y'all. So, if anybody feel like I said something bad about somebody or I ain't representing, if you want to see me face to face and we meet up somewhere and you tell me that to my face, I'm willing to do that. You know, because I ain't said nothing bad about nobody. I've been giving the elders their props, those came before me, those came behind me. 
you know, but suckers are going to talk. Everybody ain't going to always applaud you and salute you for being honorable. So, you know, you always going to have some naysayers, but for the record, I ain't said nothing bad about nobody but two dudes that's some garbage. You know what I mean? And, and I'm speaking truth. And other than that, man, I'm through with that. I interview with you, Frank Rodriguez, another ex-convict, and Chad Marks, and a brother that I met in ADS Colorado named Unique. So, you know, I, I almost curse this now and say they can kiss my you-know-what, but anybody want to see me, man, you tell them to my face. I'm willing to meet you anyway. If you feel like I'm talking bad about people, tell me to my face. Stop gossiping to other dudes. And I'm, you know, I'm just thankful that the old time, the old Mo brother, man, told me. And when I told him, I said, tell them dudes if they want to see me, they, they, you can arrange for them to meet up with me. Other than that, I'm through with that. Tell me uh, who Robert Brodus is. Robert Brodus, L. Diablo, was one of my closest and best friends, man. And um, we, uh, down Maple Glen together when we was little teenagers. And uh, Maple Glen City and all Oak Hill. Uh, he fought. He was one of the best boxers out of D.C. and in Lord. And, uh, you know, we come through the ranks together, man. And he was legendary, man. Uh, it was a hell of a dude, man. A hell of a dude, man. And, uh, he had so much heart, and uh, he had more heart than the average dude, man. And, and they were scared of him, and they killed him in Lord because they was terrified of him. You know, it's just, just like if you if you back a cat in the corner, man, he gonna scratch his way out. And dudes were scared, man. And, you know, and they worked with the police, and the police set him up, and they killed him. You know, had I been in law, and I don't think it would have never happened, but I was in Springfield, Missouri when they killed him. And uh, he was one of the best fighters that ever came out of Lord, man. He was a fight for, you know, started boxing. We was down in Oak Hill. He was fought on the street for hand. Participated in all the tournaments. Caught a murder beef, came to Lord. One of the best fighters ever came through DC Department of Correction, man. It was one of my best friends. Uh, can you take me back to Maple Glen? Like, when did you meet him? And how did you meet him? How was he? Uh, I met him down Maple Glen. You know, both of us you know, young, beady head dudes, just, you know, was just bad. And, you know, he'll be in one college, I'll be in another college. And, you know, we never was in the same college together. And, you know, but he always had heart. He always would fight back. Uh, we was there maybe Glen. Then we was old seed and all. He was in another car. That was another car. That's Brolish. That just keep gaffing. And uh, but once we got over Oak Hill, we start interacting because uh, he whipped one of my best friends. And I said, Brolish whipped you. And uh, he said, Yeah, man. Dude can run. And the dude who posed been one of the best boxers in the jump called Brodus out to fight. And Brodus got him. And after that, uh, the trainer, he said, man, you got to come around this gym, man. You just whip less than casket. And man, uh, he just overnight, you know, start going uptown, man, with the boxing team. You know what I mean? And he was so good. But see, his father was one of the best fighters out of D.C. You know, his brother, Larry Henry. So when he went on the street, Larry and them was already fighting for him. So bros went over there and was fighting with him, man. And um, he wound up being one of the best fighters out of D.C., man. Hey, in short, right? Uh, for those who people who don't know who Ham is, can you explain to the people Ham who Ham is? Ham had the boxing gym over in Elliott School, and he had one of the best boxing teams in the city. You know, his son, Mark Johnson, became uh, a world champion. You know, his, he had a son, James, that boxed, and Mark 
and they called Mark, Mark Two Sharp Johnson. I remember when he was three or four years old, him just bring him down with the team. Him and his brother just getting there, they four or five years old, put the gloves on. So I wasn't surprised when Mark wound up being the world champion. But Ham was my man, man. Uh, you know, he always brought his team down to Lawton, Youth Center, and all the tournaments throughout the city. He had, he had a, a name as one of the best trainers in the city. You know, and he brought some and he brought some hell of a fighters out of this city. Larry Henner was number two in the world when he fought Sugar Ray Leonard. So Ham Johnson was I thought he fought Sugar Ray Leonard's brother. Who? Larry Henner. Nah, Larry fought Ray. Oh, he fought Ray. Yeah, he fought Ray twice. Okay. Yeah, then Ray was number one in the world. Larry was number two in the amateurs at Lightweight. Um, back to Brodus, right? So, you know, uh, for guys who know a little bit about, you know, Lawton legendary history, so to speak, right? Yeah. People that heard of Brodus and this and this and that, and his name sort of ring bells when you talk about guys that was legendary down Lawton. So, you know, how would you say, uh, you know, he kind of got his name in Lawton? You gave me a little bit about his juvenile pain, but, you know, you know, how was it when he hit Lawton? You know, when did he hit Lawton? In 75, he came in in 75. He came in two years after me uh, and got 935 for second degree manslaughter. And, but, you know, I was already in. They sent him over to youth center for his observation. They said it was too aggressive for a youth action to send him over to Lawton. Pernell Jackson was one of the baddest middleweights on the hill, uh, Golden Glove champion. And, when Brodus came over there, he used to get in the ring with Pernell. Pernell told him a lot of stuff. He also, Pernell also told Peachtree, Peachtree a lot of stuff. I'm in the wall, uh, we will cook all us, and Charlie Wise Bay was my trainer. So, once Brodus got on the team over Lord, everything came through there 175, he knocked him out. So his name started ringing in law. I only seen one person start bros. That's Dog McKinney. Dog McKinney, the only person made bros quit. He was, class, low, right? he was older and he was a heavyweight. And uh, they set bros up, man. You know what I mean? Because uh, uh, first me and bros fought. Two weeks later, the team came back there and they throw him in there with Dog. And Dog was a heavyweight. And Bros was a light heavyweight. And uh, he just was too big and strong when he had too much experience, man. So Bros quit in the second round. And that's the first time I ever seen him quit. The dog was just too much for him, man. When I was telling you how Cadillac and Hal Swan had an epic rumble, and, and they talked about that in the Lord for decades, and and Dog McKinnon and Bill, uh, Boss Bigsby, and uh, we had an old timer named Boot Hill, Shahi. And uh, Boot Hill, cold blooded man. He come up with Dog McKinnon and them, and it was during Ramadan. So in Lawton during Ramadan, the Muslims prepare their food for the night, the Moles prepare their food, and uh, Boot Hill and the Muslims was preparing their food and another little homie named Gary Rowe, we called him Malik, they got into it with Boot Hill about some cooking and Boot Hill punched him. So Gary Rowe ran to me and drove his Michael Fallon and said, man, uh, I said, man, we ain't getting with that. I said, he, he with the Muslims. Because I wasn't a Muslim then. I said, let them deal with that. We ain't got nothing. To, we ain't be fighting for them dudes, man. But Brodus, because he liked Guy Rowe, because he come through maybe Glen Cedar and all with us, Oak Hill. I said, man, stay out of that. Me and Brodus walking down the walk, Boot Hill and Big Abdullah coming this way, and they bumped into each other. And uh, Brodus said, I ain't Guy Rowe. Boot Hill saying, I ain't none of these little niggas you be knocking out around here. 
I said, hey, man. It was too late. It was on. So, uh, it's the seeds you have to count then. So, after the camp, the old timers and the youngsters, my generation, uh, Boot here and this crew, they said, man, after camp, no knives. They're going to go one on one. So, we met in the yard, and uh, Boot Hill walking up toward bros, bros walking toward him, Boot Hill stole. And Diablo lit his ass up. I'm talking about shining. And I'm calling the shot. I'm saying, go back to the other side. Upstairs, downstairs, throw them. And he was switching up, going southpaw, because Boot Hill is a weight left, a big dude. And, and Boot Hill caught him with a fresh right hand and knocked him down, and I pulled the sword out. So they said, no knives, before, no knives, fly. And the dudes who wound up killing brothers charged me with a weight bar. And he said, drop the knife. I said, nigga, back up. But they got a jump. So somebody got the joint out the trash can, and uh, by this time, the police come. So, uh, uh, Police run there and then, you know, we hide the knives and that. But see, we, we heard they had a jump, but we didn't know they actually had it until they pulled it out. So it almost became a vicious bloodbath. So Pete Brown, the captain, say, I'm locking bros up, I'm locking fly up. If it be any, I mean, not fly, I'm locking boot heel up and I'm locking bros up. He said, I'm telling you, man, any bloodshed, we're going to back them buses up, all y'all going to the feds, man. Let us lock them up, man, and cool this stuff down. So, I said, that nigga came at me with a weight bomb. You know what I mean? So they wound up doing like 30 days. They talked in the lock up. Came out. Everything supposed to be in that piece. I tell the Apple, I say, dude charged me with a weight bomb, man. I ain't forget that. I said, let's go. He said, let's go, man. Everything. Dude wanted to kill him. That's the dude wanted to kill him. But that was an epic rumble, man, because Boot Hill was a big weightlifter and Diablo, man, was 175. Boot Hill was about 230. Man, they rumble, man. I'm talking about. That was one of the best rumbles in Lord. Always, somebody always had a person in Lord. Because you always had somebody that's trying to escape. So, either they're going to try to walk out the gate, you know, you, you, you know, they didn't have dudes that held police hostages in the wall, you know what I mean, Gene Cunningham and them, uh, uh, you know, you had dudes had guns, took the court bus over, going to court in the morning, remember that? Uh, LT, Kenneth, Kenneth May, Gene Cunningham, uh, Albert Duff, uh, 1974, they was going to court, and, uh, they had some pistols, Big Zero, and um, they caught the bus at a red light and they pulled the joints out. And they had a shootout on the bus, and uh, that was the talk of DC at the time. You know what I mean? So it, it was, it wasn't nothing unnatural or uncommon to, to know people had pistols in the law. The dudes used to bury the pistols in the ground, and you know. But at this particular time, we had heard certain people had to jump. You know what I mean? And uh, they, in fact, they sent me up DCJ in 1990, in 1990, uh, uh, cause they said I had a pistol in CB3. That's why they sent. That's how I made my last baby. They put me in the coil block, and uh, so the administration said send them up DCJ and keep them up there for 60 days. And uh, they said I had a pistol. Yeah, see, dudes used to make the zip guns, man. Uh, because sometimes you can't get close to a dude in, in, if he in the cell. Put that knife in him, so dude was making zip guns. And, and they'll shoot you while you're in your cell with zip gun. You know what I mean? Be staples, nails, and any type of metal they can get to put in the joint to make the zip gun. And that joint, I mean, that joint do some real damage, man. 
So they was making zip guns and control you know what I mean? And then ADX, when I was in ADX, a couple of guys made some zip guns. Oh, was they ever used out with ADX? Yeah, yeah, they shot a dude in the yard. Another dude caught a rat in the yard and shot him in the fence, through the fence.